Hi guys and girls and welcome back to Zenith Minis. My name is Greg and this is episode 11 of Build and Paint, a hobby show that answers all of your hobby questions like what can cause you to make a mistake? How can you manage painting fatigue? Are the Dark Gods finally blessing us with the full-blown chaos release that we all deserve? And why are my Iron Warriors bitterly squealing in disgruntled joy? <laughs> guys, as the title suggests, I have been making quite a few mistakes this week but I think it's really important that we talk about it um, this series is all about documenting the process the good stuff but also being transparent about when things go wrong as well making mistakes allows us to grow as painters you can learn from them and really develop your skills I think it's Bob Ross he says they're not mistakes they're happy little accidents so I think it's really important that you have that positive outlook especially when you're being critical of your own work and you're using it to uh, advance uh, your, your painting rather than um, giving yourself too much of a hard time about it. So I'm hopefully making these mistakes on your behalf this week and for this episode we're going to be reviewing some of the footage and I'm going to be pointing out some of the things I've done wrong, the things maybe I should have done differently and some things that I should have avoided doing completely. <laughs> so on that note let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is painting fatigue. So what exactly is painting fatigue? It does sound <laughs> pretty made up, but my definition is this is where you've been painting for too long, either as part of one session or perhaps over several days. So to use an example, the last two weeks I've pretty much painted more than I ever have. I've been working on commissions, my personal projects, so I am Warriors and Death Watch, but also content for the channel. And instead of managing my time better, I've tried to cram everything in around my day job and my personal life. So what always ends up happening is I end up rushing, getting frustrated, becoming tired and ultimately that leads to me making mistakes or even like a chain of mistakes as well. If you're anything like me then when I mess up I need to fix it straight away and when I'm suffering from painting fatigue, bit of a contradiction but I'll sit there for hours just making things worse rather than better. Luckily my commission and personal work hasn't suffered too much but the content I was creating for the channel has. So what are some of the things that you can do to help combat painting fatigue? So I reflected on the past week and I've put together a bit of a top three of the things that I wish I had done differently. The first thing I wish I had done differently was plan my painting schedule better and that's around the day job and the personal life. I guess I need to realise that I can't do everything as aggressively or as quickly as I want and sometimes you just need to take a step back, take a look and recognise that you're not some sort of painting machine. Secondly, I didn't take regular breaks and you shouldn't skip on time to relax away from the paint station. Painting, at least for me, can be very therapeutic until it's not. <laughs> uh, when you start to get tired, frustrated, or even if you just haven't moved in the while, it's time to take a break and step away. And thirdly, try not to put any additional pressure on yourself. If it feels like a rush job and you're the one setting the pace, then just change up your expectations, or you know what, just give yourself a bit more time. If you're trying to achieve a certain effect but you're having a hard time of it, then give yourself a break and then just come back and give it another go later. It's great to push and challenge yourself, but you can often be your own worst critic, and this can ultimately feel absolutely exhausting, especially if you task yourself with something like painting up a large 40k force or a particularly difficult model. So now that we've talked about hobby fatigue, let's talk about hobby routine and structure. So I think most people have a solid routine or structure, whether that's setting up your paint palette or your models or your water, and as soon as you compromise a solid productive routine in order to maybe take a shortcut, you need to be willing to sacrifice quality. In this video, I didn't set up my wet palette correctly. Uh, if you want to see the right way of doing it, then I will do a quick tips video on that, but uh, the paints weren't as thin as they needed to be, and my highlighting wasn't as smooth or as controlled as normal. So what were the reasons? Why did I compromise my normally productive routine? Well, simple answer is I wanted to get it done quickly because I'd spent too much time on my Iron Warrior Warsmith and completely, completely unreasonably, my other half had made couple plans for the weekend. Absolute heresy, I still haven't forgiven it. So I had sacrificed quality, which in hindsight was a compromise that I wasn't happy with. But luckily, the gold and silver didn't turn out too badly and I certainly wouldn't consider stripping the component at this point. But then I decided to paint Muzzleburn. 
So I only ever seem to strip my models when I'm suffering from painting fatigue, and this is when I turn into a full Slanesh worshipper, obsessing over perfection, but ironically, this is when I tend to overdo things and the results never hit the mark. So I actually thought that adding the muzzle burn would look pretty cool and would make for a good tutorial, but giving in to excess isn't always the best, in fact it very rarely is. So what ends up happening is I compromise the overall look of the model. I've been painting for too long, I'm not seeing things clearly. I think, oh, you know what, that's going to be a cool tutorial, and I'm just not in the zone. So I get to the point where I know that the muzzle burn and the plasma are really not working together. In hindsight, I could have saved the plasma caliber simply by repainting the silver. Up until now I'd been pretty slow and purposeful like the Death Guard, so I'd only used thin coats so repainting it would have been a perfectly reasonable option. Or looking back at it now, I probably could have just left it as it was, it definitely wasn't as bad as it seemed in my head. But in true Slanesh style, I decided to be pig-headed about it and try to make it perfect by adding more and more glazes, effectively taking it to the point where the details were clogged and actually it was just beyond saving. The difficult part now is I've got to decide whether I strip something that I've spent hours of work on because I was tired, frustrated and I've made some mistakes. It's a hard pill to swallow but you know what, it's a necessary one because now I'll be less tempted to rush the process and perhaps I'll give myself a well deserved break when things turn into a bit of a chore. Guys, on the positive side, at least you get a new tutorial on how to strip plastic miniatures, but I guess importantly I've learned some valuable things and that, when I put them into practice, will help me grow as a painter. Guys, that is the end of today's episode, really hope you've enjoyed, let me know in the comments below what has been your happiest little accident, and what did you learn from it, I'd love to read your stories, and I'm sure your experience could end up helping the community as well. If you haven't subbed already, then why not, you're in with the chance of winning a brand new box of Skatari Rangers when the series comes to an end, but you'll also be notified every single time I upload a brand new video. And speaking of brand new videos, next week we've got a tutorial on how to strip plastic models. So looking forward to that and I hope you'll join me as well. But until then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.